So for example, your gate one documentation that's due is the revised pro uh, proposal. Uh, it's basically the document they turn at the end of the semester uh, with revisions. It's a project plan, which is basically a timeline. So take the contents of this document and the schedule, put it into a timeline for us so that you can convey the process that you're going to go through this semester. Your clinical stakeholder summary, which is a summary of the clinician's interactions with you, who they are, and what they do, which you've already done. Tweak it. Your core key competencies and strategic focus, which you've already done one. Uh, initial traceability matrix, which you a little bit on, but uh, might need some tweaking. Uh, and uh, a storyboard. Those six things are due, and they're due in your folder and in the digital design history file, which we'll cover in just a second, by the time of your gate, by your presentation. You bring your design history file with you. And you present on them. Gate one is you presenting to about four or five other people who've never seen you before, in the context of this design class, what you want to do. And so the purpose of gate one is that, that you're trying to convey to them uh, what you want to do, why you want to do it, and, and how you think you might do it. Most of those things uh, for gate one you, you've already had a first pass at, so there's not a whole lot of original work necessary, just a bit of reorganization uh, and cleaning up and correction as needed. The storyboard is probably new, and we'll cover that in a minute. Uh, this is a table uh, that structures it out for you in terms of the design history file documentation due, how much it's worth, and the gate uh, presentation material on how much it's worth. And below that are the actual details of each of those. So the design history file documents, uh, pre-standard formats, and an example, your design history file uh, number one is your revised project. Number two, project plan. Number three, clinical and stakeholder summary. Number four, your core team competencies and strategic focus. Five, traceability matrix. And you'll see in the traceability matrix that all I want is your initial needs and inputs. That's it, you don't have to fill out the entire thing. And that's something that will iterate uh, over time. And, and so on and so forth. So this, base, this document basically details each of the things in your design history file, what's required, how much it's worth, and um, when you should present it. Traceability matrix is one of those documents that within the context of design is, is a living document and we'll be updating it over the course of the semester. So just as you might think of the traceability matrix having the, the need and then define those in, into inputs, and then you work on your product specifications, and you have your outputs, and then you do your verification and validation. We work through those as part of the gate. So your traceability matrix is going to be updated over the course of the six gates. So you initially get 2% uh, just for having your needs and inputs in, in gate one. And then over the course of gate two, you put in your engineering requirements, gate three, product specifications, gate four, verification validation, five final outputs, and six verification and validation results. These uh, elements within the traceability matrix are assess assessed as part of your use of the design process in your, design, in your gates, subsequent gates. So you get credit for just making it, structuring it, and then as you fill it in over the course of subsequent gates, uh, that will go a long way towards getting, getting you a better grade on your use of the design process in your gates. The storyboard uh, is something that we've added because we often found that, that teams do not have an ability at the beginning to adequately describe what their thing is supposed to do, where it's supposed to do it, and who is supposed to interact with it. And so this essentially is one of those instruction manuals you get uh, from a country that might not speak English that just has pictures. And your 
job is to convey to someone else what is your device, what does it do, what are its novel or specific features, in what environment is that done, and who does it, or who is it done to. So it's a comic book panel, essentially, uh, and you can add a small amount of text underneath it. But really it's just, do you know what you're making, and do you know how it's going to be used by others and where? Uh, and if there are particular features that are novel or complex, or this little thingy does that little thing and makes this thing happen kind of elements, then that should be conveyed as well. You know when you're reading a comic book and it has a panel and it's blank and says magic happens, and then, you know, the superhero wins? I don't like reading those kind of things, and we don't like reading them in comic books either. And we often found that if we didn't have a storyboard, that there was this magic panel that reside, that, that continued to be discussed, or not discussed, up into gate three and four and five, and nobody was addressing it. So what we want to do with the storyboard, and again, this is kind of a, a living document, it's your chance for you to sit down and think through the steps in the process and know where your gaps are, know where your magic panel is, and uh, be able to convey that to somebody else. And ultimately these sketches uh, will go into your, some of your other final documents as well. But it gives you a chance to be able to explain what's going on. So uh, we're going to cover these in a little bit more detail, because this is gate one stuff. Uh, but if you will, uh, please look through this entire document because it covers all of the gate documents that are due, all the design history files that are due, uh, and uh, including gate two, which is your prior art and predicates device review. This is your chance uh, for us to do a little bit more of a deep dive to determine that yes, what you are doing uh, has some novelty. Yes, there are other competitive devices out there, and this is how you differentiate yourself. Uh, and yes, there are these technical issues that you need to learn a little bit more about, whether they be the pathology, the anatomy, uh, the, the technical aspects of, say, some novel material that you're using, the science behind it. The way the design history files are, uh, documents are structured is that there's one that's worth more than the others, and that's your primary document. That's the primary thing you'll probably be presenting on as part of your, uh, your gate. Uh, this, for example, gate two. It uh, has the current technology summary. Um, it'll have a doc it's a document basically that, that summarizes five technical articles. Uh, it has a summary of five other products in the market. And you have a summary of being able to contact three manufacturers of these products. So there's one that's worth more of your grade, and then there are secondary documents that are worth less. So if you go back to the, the matrix here, it's chunked out for you. Gate one is total, I mean, for your efforts, is worth 18% of your final grade, 4% for the presentation, and uh, another 14% for largely stuff you've already done, but uh, you need to get the team back together, uh, tweak it, reorganize it, make sure it's uh, focused, get that storyboard done, and make sure that you have all the documentation in place. Again, there are two places where this is due. The hard copy design history file, uh, which should be coming in this morning. Uh, we've got a folder for everybody, so that they all look good. Uh, your design history files are to be kept in the design lab uh, when you're not using them. If you want to check them out, uh, take them home, whatever, uh, it'd be a shame to lose them. Uh, we will be grading out of your design history file. The hard copies will be the ones that we grade. And um, so they're intended as a, a mediator, mediator between you and people grading your work. And then ultimately at the end we have a nice folder hard copy that we can keep on record. Uh, and most of the time Perf wants to see it and other people want to see it as well. And in order for you to convey all of this information for your design mentors, uh, we have um, shared class, shared team folders. So yesterday you should have received an invite to each of your design team folders. 
Um, each of them uh, is shared just with your team and the TAs at the moment. And uh, after we are absolutely sure that we know which mentors are coming to which gates, you can share that with them as well. Um, each folder for each team has a design history file document and gate presentation uh, documents within them. And each design history file document folder, hopefully, has your 24 design history file uh, document folders in it already structured for you. You should keep this structure. Um, makes it easier for people to find things. It also makes it easier for uh, you to present things. But an example would be that within each folder, you make sure that you have a document that's ready to go. Again, on the digital side, all of this is due by your gate. Three seconds before your gate, I don't care, before your gate. So that when you want to present, you can present out of this folder if you want to, but more importantly, the people at your gate can find your documents uh, during the gate, after the gate. If for some reason we should lose things, we have a digital file of them as well. And as well, we can link certain ones of these things out to people who might want to see them. Some of these folders will contain more than one document. Most will not, but uh, some will, and that's why they're in folder structure. And um, I ask that every document that you save simply have your team name in front of it. So uh, the way that the folders are structured is 